y'all. New day, new verse. Let's dig into verses 16 through 18, shall we? Behind and underneath all this, there is a holy, God-planted, God-tended root. If the primary root of the tree is holy, there's bound to be some holy fruit. Some of the tree's branches were pruned, and new wild olive shoots were grafted in. Yet the fact that you are now fed by that rich and holy root gives you no cause to gloat over the pruned branches. Remember, you aren't feeding the root. The root is feeding you. And while I was digging into this verse, I've been meditating on it a little bit less today, today, and other times, and I find myself realizing that, you know, we don't have anything to brag on. Paul, in some of his other writings, talks about the fact that if we are to brag on anything, it should be on our weakness. Because it is in our weakness that God's strength is seen. And, you know, thinking about the verse that I find myself thinking about fruits of the Spirit as well. With the... It makes me think about the idea of being grafted in. It makes me think about what we look like. If we are truly drinking from the holy root, if we're truly drinking from God, from Jesus' his spirit in us, giving us that strength, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, if we are living off of that root, it feeding us, then we look at. You know, Jesus says that the health of the fruit shows the health of the tree. You can't get healthy fruit from an unhealthy tree. You can't get, you know, healthy from healthy, unhealthy from unhealthy. You're not going to get an unhealthy fruit from a healthy tree. And it makes me think about the fact that we are given this beautiful gift to be able to interact with Him, to dwell, to pursue Him. And as we're living in this root, as we're living in the kingdom, we end up talking like where we come from, where your heart is, your treasure is. And it makes me think about the fact that when we dwell, when we interact, when we live, our actions usually display what it is. You know, the mask, I think it's in Luke, can't be in for, you know, it, you can't hide your true nature for very long. It always comes out. But the beautiful thing is there, that when we're feeding off the root and we're letting God remake our nature, then even when we stumble, we're still on that root. That we have the opportunity to grow and be blessed and live and thrive. Not because of anything we do, but because of everything He does. He's the root feeding us. And it's a beautiful thing to me that we would be able to see his grace and his glory and his mercy thrive in our lives. That because of his mercy, that because of his love, that because of everything he has done, we do it for others. Not as a twist your arm, because that's religion. Religion wants to break your arm to make you do something. Relationship, you do it because it's part of your inborn character. It's part of that character that God is making you. That that anger does not have to be all there is. That sadness, that's the, for those different things that we deal with, they're not all we are. They're not even who we are. And then as we thrive living on the root, his root, his word, <laughs> the root of Jesse, the new shoot, to use from... Uh... But it's just beautiful. It's beautiful that we can... And that as wrestlers with God, children of Israel, that we are related to Abraham through faith, not physical matter, but through something far more important. We can wrestle with God. I mean, that's what Israel needs. God wrestler. And that we are able to, not only able to, but are welcomed to wrestle with God and work through it and learn and dig in. That's a beautiful gift. If you're struggling, don't self-admonish, don't self-hate, don't beat yourself up for it. Think about the fact that God, who dies for our sins, who died for our sin and raised to life, right now at the right hand of God, sticks up for us because we want Him. 
I, I, I've been thinking about these post things and thinking about the tone and realizing that as much as I like to make fun of everything, you know, sacred cows, best served a coleslaw, this is one of those few things that I don't make jokes about. And it's not because I'm not making a crack at the Christian religion. I'm well aware that uh, the religion revolving around it is odd and, you know, but the relationship, that matters. That's important. The relationship helps us not only learn who he is, but who we are. And that digging into the word, that it's not it's not a tool to beat each other to death with. It's not a sword to run each other through. It's a banquet. <laughs> Jesus' own words when he's calling out the Pharisees in Luke. It's a banquet. It is a gift to be able to go and dig in and be nourished by the Lord. Because again, it goes right back to the fact that we are grafted into the family by accepting him as master and savior. We don't get to glow over people who aren't. If anything, when we're interacting with people who aren't part of the blood and a part of the family, that still follow the old Adam rather than the new Adam, Jesus, Yeshua, I pray for them that they see the light, Jew and Gentile alike. Because actions have consequences. The bill comes due. It's just a simple fact of the matter. Even, you know, karma. We all understand the concept. But it's deeper than that. It isn't just a, a surface level. It's also saying that the influences we have, those radiate out. That sin exponentially goes outward. That we are saved from that is a gift. A gift that we have to share. That God loves us in spite of those webs that we weave. That God loves us in spite of the reptilian moments of death and plague that we birth, God loves us anyway. He takes us. He wants us to dwell with Him. And when we release to Him, He'll teach us how to do it better, how to do it different, how to live in an upside-down kingdom. Um, here is to tomorrow for digging into verses 19 through 20. I hope you all have a blessed day. May His blessing be upon you. And remember, we rise by lifting each other. You're not in this alone. God bless.